Hello everyone, this is the technical information about the Food Photography Hot Beverages project. You will be taking approximately half of your photos with the camera at a 45 degree angle. You can see on the left the camera is attached to a tripod and then adjusted to be at approximately 45 degrees. On the right you can see an example of a 45 degree angle photo. You will take approximately half of your photos with the camera at a 90 degree angle. You can see on the left that the camera has been attached to a rig and is pointing straight down at the subject. And on the right, you can see what a 90 degree angle photo looks like. For this project, we'll be doing something called tethered shooting, which means connecting a camera to a computer via a cable and software. This way of working allows the photographer to see exactly what they are going to get as the final product. So what you should be doing while you're working with your objects is constantly looking up at the computer screen to see what they look like. The lens. Many of you already know that on many lenses that we have, there's a little switch that says AF for autofocus and MF for manual focus. You should switch the camera to manual focus for this project. Many of you also know that this large ring is how you zoom the camera in and out. But what you may not know is that when the camera is in manual focus mode, the way that you focus it is to use this small ring at the very end of the lens. That's what you'll be using to focus the camera for this project. Software. Many professional cameras come with tethering software. This is the Canon EOS utility interface. We're going to look at it in a little bit of detail. First of all, right here, you can see that this camera is in the correct manual focus mode. This little white rectangle can be dragged anywhere around the image and you can use it to help focus the image. These controls down here at the bottom allow you to flip the image, but at the end you can see the zoom. When you click the zoom button, it makes whatever is inside the white rectangle really large so that you can fine focus that with the lens. This part of the interface shows all the settings of the camera. You can see that this camera is in aperture priority. It's on F25. The ISO is set to auto, however I recommend that you set it to 100. Then down at the bottom you can see that there are exposure compensation controls. To change these controls you can use the mouse to click directly on any of those items and then click through the menu to change them. And finally, when you're ready to take your photo, you click that little round button right there with the mouse and then wait a moment. Sometimes there's a little bit of lag time. You'll hear the camera click and then you'll see the photo appear on the screen. Here are a couple of reminders about composition. Zoom in to show detail and eliminate unnecessary distractions. Framing. Use related objects to surround the subject. In this image, we can see the green tray creating a frame, but also other objects framing the mugs and even the white napkin. Be careful, however, not to create too much clutter that can detract from the subject. Speaking of too much clutter, what could be done to simplify these photos? What could be removed or rearranged? On the left, Maybe there doesn't need to be two mugs. One of them could be removed. Maybe um, the red objects in the background are possibly a little bit too distracting. And what is that mug in the very foreground? If we look at on the other side, again, maybe we could uh, remove one of the mugs, take out some of the fruit and rearrange things to create a simpler composition. Depth of field. Shallow depth of field blurs background details to increase focus on the subject. Blurred background details can still add to the feeling of the scene, however. 
Suggested camera settings, F5 for shallow depth of field, and ISO of 100 to preserve sharpness. It's okay to use deep depth of field if you want, if that's the aesthetic that you're looking for. Lighting. Compare the lighting in these photos. Which one is more effective and why? I think that the photo on the right has much better lighting. It's beautiful and even. On the left, there are parts of the photo that have good lighting, but the very front of the photo is dark. A couple of things that the photographer could do to fix that is move the light, uh, move the subject around, or use a reflector. This is an example of a reflector. It has a white side, a black side, and a silver side. We're going to be using a DIY version of this. So what the reflector does is uses the available light to bounce the light onto the subject. So you can see in the before and the after photo that the after has been dramatically improved by using the reflector. Leading lines. Use secondary objects to subtly guide the viewer's eye to the subject. What lines draw your attention to this subject? In my opinion, the tray is creating uh, leading lines that draw you into the photo and make it look deep. Also, I think that the spoon resting inside the cup creates a subtle line that directs attention to the cup. Value or color contrast. Light and dark values placed next to each other can make the subject pop. For example, the dark colored background with the light colored ceramic. Rule of thirds. The main subject dominates a third of the area. The main subject is placed on one of the intersecting points of a grid called a focal point. That's it, everyone. Have fun with your project. That's it everyone, have fun.